Would you like to know more? Welcome to Warmaster Podcast, another episode of the Adventures in 3D Printing series. Today we are looking at the next batch of Ankolo Miniatures um, Magma Dwarfs, Chaos Dwarfs um, in common parlance. You can pick these up at Gumroad. I was sent a set of STLs to have a look at, so here we go. Um, I think this is a, probably a Bull Centaur Hero, realistically. And he is on, or they are on, let's let's be gender neutral about this thing. A 25mm base, 25mm scenic base. Um, so a fine looking creature, uh, not too big a hat, certainly not by um, modern GW standards uh, with the old high elves. Um, yeah. uh, I've, I've changed, I need to talk a little bit about the fact that I've changed my workflow a little to kind of speed things up. So um, as the kids have been off for a couple of weeks over Easter and it kind of put a bit more pressure on my time. So I've gone back to using uh, a non-water based resin. So this is, um, this is Elegoo, I, th I think it's Elegoo ABS like gray. So you have to clean it up with the IPA, which obviously is a thing, but it also means that I shouldn't have all that rubbish or that I was getting on the water based stuff because uh, IPA cleans very well and then I was just using a bit of hot water to get them off the build plate because getting anything off the build plate um, can be problematic and the warm water um, is a definite way to, to help remove that issue and that's kind of how I got down the, the rabbit hole of using the water washable stuff because I was washing them in, in hot water and they were coming off really easily if anything a little bit too easy because they were becoming a bit malleable and the bases were bending a bit so here I'm, I'm giving them a full six minutes in the wash and cure station with the IPA and that gets all the rubbish off and then I'm giving a couple of minutes under running hot water because there shouldn't be any residue kicking around after apart from a bit of the IPA uh, after the six minutes so a bit of running hot water because dealing with the contaminated wall water is, is not a insignificant issue in itself so a bit of running hot water just to get them a little bit softer and that helps you get them off the base nicely so anyway we have a bull centaur he it's probably quite a big fellow isn't he? he's probably about 30 uh, what, what about 25 mil yeah about 20 well it's kind of a weird pose isn't he but it's i guess that's about 23 22 mil but it's a kind of weird pose, so it's probably more like 18 mil if you went this way. Yeah. So, good stuff. I like this fella. Um, not too much cleanup. Cleanup's, um, yeah. I think the way I'm looking at cleanup now is like if you buy a plastic sprue and you have to clip everything off the sprue and then you have to, you will have to do a little bit of cleaning up even on, on the best produced plastic sprues. Uh, before you glue everything together that if you compare that time to the time of clipping off support that's probably the trade-off um, there's there's more cleanup with plastic stuff than there is with metal stuff there's probably more cleanup with resin stuff than there is the plastic stuff um, and, but also one other thing is I'm, I'm, it's still not that easy to get everything off without damage it's just fact like uh, and also because the miniatures are so small it's you don't want to damage the miniatures so you always go on the side of leaving a little bit of support on and then how much of the support do you really want to go back and try and clean off so uh, every, every type of miniature has its pros and cons um, but it's, it's important to be honest about them so that people know what they're buying into okay so we've got some more characters here we've got a we've got a bit of a jazz hands sorcerer going on here uh, I guess uh, that, this could look quite, quite cool, this ball, if it's painted nicely. Um, so I guess he's kind of, I, I presume it's some kind of orb of seeing or uh, massive hat. That's what we want to see. Well, not me particularly, but people love the big hatted dwarves. And again, this looks like a 25 mil base. So um, some people are a bit um, fussy about having the same kind of basis for all wizards and the same kind of basis for all heroes same kind of basis for all generals so um this guy could be a general i guess uh, but this sorcerer is on a very similar size base 
not identical actually, a little bit smaller. So maybe this is more like 20 mil and this is 25 mil. Um, yeah, nice big moustache. Uh, all right, and then we have a robot. I don't quite know the the law behind this fella. He's a, a like he must be a hero or a wizard, and he's kind of all robotic, steam powered almost, steampunk. You kind of feed the face here, feed the coal in this face, and off he goes. <laughs> I, I don't know if that though in the middle is his third leg. I don't mean to get um, a bit crude here because <laughs> he's got, <laughs> I think that might be a support I just haven't taken out, but it looked a bit like the other leg. So I kind of left it in, but maybe it should come out. It's, it's quite a big, thick support if it is one. Uh, but I guess that that's holding quite a lot of weight. That's probably the support holding the body. So I'm saying that probably is a support. And he's got a nice hammer there. So. I don't know what the, 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 the background on this metal fella is. And he's probably on, he's on a, like a rectangular base. I don't know what the idea of that is. Um, everything else seems to be on rounds. And it's probably about, what, 5 mil by 10 mil, this one. And then we have, uh, looks like a, maybe like a 10 mil round base of some uh, gigantic hatted Chaos Dwarf scouring the distance. I don't know, what's he looking for? Maybe he's a, 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 a kind of a, a artillery sighter. What do they call him? A lookout or artillery spotter. That's the correct word, isn't it? Massive axe. His axe is bigger than him. So, I mean, I mean you've got to ignore the hat because the hat isn't him. He's probably, the axe is probably one and a half times the size of him. Jeez. Uh, so a nice scenic base again, though. I like those, I like those. And then we also printed out a set of Hobgoblin Riders, which we're going to bring in now, and a set of uh, Bull Centers. So, Hobgoblin Riders are an interesting choice in the actual game of Warbuster, in that um, without optional rules, I find them completely underwhelming. But with optional rules, yeah, they've definitely got a, a little bit more spice about them. The optional rules prevent them being pursued if they're charged in the front, so they take a bit of a slapping in the front and then unless you're light cavalry or maybe flyers I, I think flyers should be able to do as well but unless you're light cavalry or flyers uh, you're going to get uh, only one round against them which will hurt them but not kill them um, so these are hobgoblin wolf riders so slightly better than goblin riders I think they have an extra attack so there's something like three uh, with a short shooting attack three normal attacks one short shooting attack um, three hits and that's six up armor about 80 85 points so not exactly cheap um, in game terms and that so hopefully we're going to see some um we're going to see some bows and stuff mixed in with the spears and swords so this abs stuff is it's definitely a lot firmer is that a positive or negative only time will tell if uh the amount of flexibility is a, a boon or a negative and that if they snap more or not we'll have to wait and see still all this technology is relatively new there were some pretty chunky supports i was a little bit worried about going as like to the front here under this kind of beard um, so i tried not to go too mad on cleaning them off so um, I don't, yeah it's quite hard to see i mean you've got to remember these miniatures are tiny so um it if you, you really can't tell if there's a little bit of extra support left in or if that is just a, a, a kind of longish beard. But hey, I mean, the, the miniatures are so small that it's actually quite forgiving on the table. The kind of supports underneath the, the actual body of the miniature. Um, what have we got here? Got another couple, one with a bow and one with a spear. Quite dynamic pose on the front here. That's quite nice. Uh, there's a support running across the bow there. That looks like a pain in the ass to get out. I'm going to have to go back in and get that one, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it is a support. Sometimes it's it's just a support you've cut off that's kind of just attached itself. But I, I did give them another wash. So I hope that isn't the case for this one. Um, well, let's rush through the other. So we've got a musician. Oh, some supports here. We need to get off. Um, okay, this is obviously our musician with a horn. Uh, 
So I think the the support, the rest of the supports were reasonable uh, on the feet and stuff. It was just, the only ones I was concerned about were the, the ones on the on the on the chins, but they seem to come off relatively well. When you're cutting them off, you can't really tell. And uh, as I'm not undercoating these now, I'm just uh, hoping the grey colour of the uh, the resins enough for you to pick out some detail. There's a weird here that's kind of like yeah so that's that's strange that's a strange artifact it's like i don't know if that's a slicing error it probably is there, there would have been a support running up there and it's if you can see it's just become like a flat disc underneath the tail it's similar things happened here on the edge of this tail so i think that's probably a slicing error um if I was going to print them off many units of these, I'd probably go back in and try and amend the slice it again. And the, the problem is with, with 3D printing, if you're only printing one unit of something off just to look at, then you kind of just accept that if a slice, if a slicer goes wrong, you're not really going to go back and correct it. But if, if you, this was your business and you were printing a thousand units of this a day, then obviously you'd spend more time slicing and, and uh, perfecting which of because not all slices perform equally on all miniatures. Sometimes you might use like Chitty Box and it works fine. Then another one it doesn't work fine, so you go try and find something else. So over time you'll find the profile and the slicing machine that works for the miniature. But unless you're in production meth mode, you kind of have to. You're gonna have to accept that sometimes you're gonna get these kind of abnormalities, and it's just like shrug your shoulders and move on. I'm, I'm not even sure. I mean, if you imagine it on the table, you ain't even gonna see it. So, and you can probably clip a little bit of that off with some, um, some pl like plastic cutters or a scalpel or something. Okay, we'll do the last two. We have the banner. It's always nice to see a banner. It's quite a nice triangular banner. I can't see what's going on on the top. This is one problem with not undercoating that the detail is a little bit, little bit lost. So, if these look a little bit less detailed than the uh previous uh, the water washable ones a i think they probably are i think the water washable does come out a bit sharper than this uh, but b not undercoating them uh is obviously going to mean that um it's a little bit harder to see detail so here's a support under here under the chin and i've tried to get off as near as i can to the wolf's neck and and you probably have to use a scalpel or something to get in there and try and trim that off And then the final one is here. So we have uh, quiver of arrows and a spear. So he's going to have a bow over this side. Yeah. Very nice bit of work. Very nice bit. Of, I've, I've broken a tail off here. That sometimes happens. Hey ho. Hey ho. Um, I mean, not everything gets through life perfect, does it? I mean, it's had its t tail docked in a, in a fight, no doubt. Speaking of fights, um, we, we've got a couple of gerbils at home and I, I wasn't told that they can fight, but um, there's been a new claim for dominance by the, um, the non-dominant male, because we have two males. One male's been dominant for the first three years, now the other one's made a play for it and nearly killed the dominant male. <laughs> so now, now the dominant male is completely submissive and beaten half to death. Um, but you can't separate them, because if you separate them, then they can never live together again. So... Um, luckily, it looks like that was just a one-off, but um, who'd have known it? The, the, the trauma of seeing a white gerbil covered in blood in the morning. And then we're on to our bull centaurs. So with this one here, we have a drummer. He's got a bit of a mask on and a fellow. Oh, we've got another artifact there, haven't we, underneath him? Uh, it's weird what's going on there. Um, and we've got some kind of licky short or spiralized hat on him. Um, and a Big handle marbles. The moustaches and beards are absolutely tremendous. <laughs> if only it could grow one so good. Um, in the game, bull centaurs are in a weird place, but it's quite a complicated discussion, so it's not one I'm going to go into overly. But um, they're probably more expensive than they're worth, but it's difficult to make them cheaper because it makes other choices similar to these which are already more expensive, even more preposterously expensive. So there is an issue with the game in that very good, expensive cavalry 
are very expensive and probably too expensive compared to um, regular nights but it's quite difficult to unpack that discussion uh, so here we go. I don't know what this is like. Jesus on the cross going on here. I'm not a big, uh, big in aficionado on the the chaos dwarf uh, lore and history and stuff. I don't quite understand why they've got. Maybe it's just maybe I'm looking too much in it. Maybe it's just a flayed man kind of um, just a strung up human to scare people off. So see, here you go. This is what's going to happen to you. You're going to be disemboweled and strung up if you uh, mess with those chaos dwarves. So that's the bannerman. And then we've just got a regular dude at the back. Very nice. And then we have... We have... Oh, my God, what's going on with this fella here? For a start, he's got no hat. He must have lost his hat. Oh, he's carrying a human head or something here. Yowzers. By the hair. Right, they're evil bastards, aren't they? And... Um, it's got a bit of a... Um, space marine action on the... Um, on the shoulder pads and um kind of sort of I, I didn't quite maybe chaos dwarfs are just really evil and I, it's just something i've never been um maybe that's why they appeal to some dark-hearted people um and what have we got next we have these two fellas is that a leader there wrestling on his sword um, and another fellow with a spiralized hat and a sword very nice I think realistically you can take four units of this but it's quite difficult to find the points if you take four units of this because that's about a third of your army okay uh, i like the two swords the cross swords that's quite a nice motif and this guy here is gonna, gonna, gonna do some big overhead chop and then our final miniature for today is what well, final strip of miniatures is this fella here I, the supports on these were much less than the supports on the hobgoblins i believe uh, although it has been a few days since i cleaned them up hey look he's, he's got the old uncle sam we want you <laughs> you wouldn't argue with him if these fellas are coming to old you with a bloody flayed man on the banner and um somebody's head under their arms you'd probably be running the other way wouldn't you okay so these were ankylo dwarves uh, mag sorry, Hanklo miniatures, magma dwarves, chaos dwarves to us uh, as a normal folk, and you'll find them on Gun Road. I think I've got maybe one, maybe two more videos to do, but we're getting into some quite big stuff. Um, so um, I'll do another one hopefully later on in this week.